Jesus tells us you have to pick. You can't serve two gods. He says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. If God is your master, then you must serve him. But if mammon is master, well, then you must serve it. Now, what is mammon? Mammon means wealth or accumulation, earthly riches. And so Jesus is telling us, he says, look, you, you can't do both. You, you can't be a follower of the one true and living God and yet be beholden to what mammon is going to hold you to in this life. It, you actually become a slave with money as a master if you're not real careful. And he also uses it in this way as a personification. It actually becomes a God in a life if we're not careful. We, we've got to, to make sure that we realize what money truly is. Now, in 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 10, it says, For the love of money is the root of all evil, which, while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Now, a lot of times that's mistranslated and people say money is the root of all evil, but that's not true. Money is neutral. Money is just a tool. It's a commodity. It's a means of trade and commerce. But the love of money, you see, that's greed. That's lust. That's a desire that comes from within. And the Bible tells us that that is the root of all evil. Every manner of evil that you can imagine can be traced back to the root of this love of money. And so can you see how it could actually compete with the place of God in a person's life? And so Jesus tells us, he says, you got to pick. You, you can't serve God and mammon. You can't serve two masters, period. You're going to love one and hate the other. or You're going to hold to one and despise the other. So you've got to pick. Now, why would someone choose to serve mammon? Well, because of the promises that mammon makes. Think about it. Mammon promises food. Mammon promises clothing. Mammon promises protection and security. Mammon promises power and influence. It, it makes all of these claims and all of these promises. You say, well, when, when did money ever promise those things? Well, just look around. Look around and look at the wealthy and look how they're insulated. Look how they're isolated. Look how they, they have no wants, no needs. It keeps them warm in the winter and cool in the summer, or at least it seems that way. The problem with mammon is, is that it doesn't always carry through on its promises. It promises a lot of things that it doesn't actually deliver on, but not God. God always carries through on his promises God's promised to take care of us. He's promised to clothe us. He's promised to feed us. He's promised to protect us, to provide for us. He's promised to save us and to take us to a home that can't compare to anything here on this earth. He's promised all of those things to us if we'll trust him and follow him. So really, there's no contest. Instead of chasing after money, what Jesus wants us to do is chase hard after God and realize that he's going to provide the things that we need. But so many times people take their eyes off of God, put their eyes onto mammon and pursue after mammon and they wind up serving mammon. They wind up beholden to mammon. They wind up enslaved to mammon and it can happen. And so I just want to encourage you this morning, Jesus, he lays this out for us real succinctly and real clearly. And it reminds me of the days of Elijah. And Elijah says in 1 Kings chapter 18 and verse 21, Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt you between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. That's where we are today. Make a choice. If you're going to follow Jesus, stop chasing money. Stop chasing wealth. Stop chasing accumulation. And trust him. He loves you. He's going to provide for the things that you need. God bless you. Have a great day.